guys, it's Kara here and I want to do a video on getting ready for a photo shoot because for me I recently did the photo shoot with Ludwig the day after my competition and I know I was kind of like unsure what to get ready and bring with me and I was looking for other YouTube videos and I couldn't really find much so hopefully this video is helpful, helpful for you all. So for me, I plan to do a photo shoot the day after my competition. At first I was looking at doing it before my competition to kind of get me my body to a point prior to the competition. Um, so for those of you that are competitors looking to do a photo shoot, I still think that's a great way to do it. Um, but in actuality, it worked out even better for me that I did it the day after the competition because it kind of condensed all my traveling into one weekend. If you're someone that would be traveling for a photo shoot, it made it easier to manage in terms of expense and traveling that route. Not to mention, um, I felt like my body looked even better the day after the competition. Um, so the one thing with that is you kind of have to keep your diet in check a little bit the night after a competition, which isn't a bad thing. It kind of prevents you from going like overboard the night after a competition. Um, and I felt like my body looked awesome going into the photo shoot. Um, so those are just kind of things to think about if you're a competitor booking a photo shoot a couple weeks out beforehand, or maybe even a couple weeks after the competition. If you're worried about like the post-competition weight gain, um, you could book it that way. If you're not a competitor, but you're someone who's getting in shape and you feel like you're in the best shape of your life, booking a photo shoot can be an awesome way to kind of, you know, keep you on track. Um, push your body to the next limit and then you've got these like nice these fabulous photos to kind of remember how hard you work and how you looked um, So in terms of that, you know, everyone has their own different reasons for booking a photo shoot Some of the things that I recommend doing ahead of time um, Do your research on the photographer you're gonna work with or you want to work with I would not go by price Necessarily because you may get what you pay for if you just go with the cheapest photographer out there, you know, there's going to be other expenses you're going to acquire doing a photo shoot. So um, it does cost money, but sometimes you get what you pay for with these photo shoots and the photographers. So do your research. For me, I I'm at a point where I was able to put the money towards it and I want it to know that I was going to get slamming photos. So I knew the expense going into this was going to be worth it for me. So to give you an example for me for a photo shoot with Ludwig, I had to pay a hundred dollar deposit up front. Um, and then I had to pay him $600 for the shoot. And actually I can't even remember for you guys how many photos that buys me, but um, we did several different outfit looks for the photo shoot with that. So you need to talk with your photographer, first find out the initial cost, but also find out what's included with it in terms of the amount of pictures that you're gonna get at the end of the day with it. And also if you're gonna be able to get different looks, um, different environments, um, those are certain things you need to look into. So you need to kind of have an idea what look you're going for you know whether or not you want a fitness photo shoot are you just looking for like some people do like the boudoir shoots where you're like a little more sexy and lingerie um some people just want like girl next door like outside and the you know daffodils or whatever like know what you're looking for and how you want your pictures to look your photographer is not a mind reader so you guys it helps to like do some research look at other people's professional photos that's how i found ludwig because i saw other girls photos and i was like yes i love the way the fitness shots look i love the way the pretty shots look the sexy shots like everything about it was to me like um, I just knew hands down there was no like I was gonna get exactly what I wanted going with this photographer So if you're able to do that research and kind of find out what looks you're looking for um, For my photo shoot. I wanted to have like the fitness Slash sexy kind of look and then I also wanted like some nice like pretty looks as well. Um, for me, I wanted to use my photos for like social media and that kind of stuff. So have an idea and communicate that with your photographer. It'll just help you in the end get the best package. You know, you don't want a bunch of pictures where you're just standing there like smiling. You can do that on your own for much cheaper. So spend the time to do some research and have a good idea of what you want your photos to look like. Um, 
then what I did is I spoke with my photographer and kind of got an idea of where we could shoot. We were going to shoot inside a gym and then there was also some outdoor places we were going to shoot as well. So that's kind of what gave me um, some more information where to shop and I discussed it with him but for you guys I think these are hands down some staple places for females to shop at. Um, Forever 21 has really upped their game. They have an awesome selection of fitness wear that is great for photo shoots. Um, and if you're doing like outdoorsy, non like fitness shoots, um, they have some great stuff too versus just the athletic wear. Um, also Victoria's Secrets. Um, this is something I learned from him. I wouldn't have necessarily done this, but he told me to pick up more like booty shorts, like the little um, cheeky type underwear because for my first photo shoot, I did a ton of like Nike shorts, which are longer and you know, more gym appropriate. However, for a photo shoot, when you're trying to show off your best body, you want to be able to see like all the lines and everything else. So it depends on your comfort level. But for me, I wanted to show that all off. So I did go to Victoria's Secrets and bought like some of the like cheeky looking underwear. I would have never thought in a million years to be buying underwear for a photo shoot, but it actually translated very nicely for the looks that I was going for. Um, so Victoria's Secrets, you can pick up some of those types of underwears. They also have a great athletic line with fun sports bras you can get and that kind of stuff. Um, so Forever 21, Victoria's Secrets, and the third place I would suggest is American Apparel, which for where I live, they don't actually have a store around but I just purchased stuff online. They have very fun like body suits that just look really cool for a, I think in my opinion for a photo shoot. Very fun photo um, body suits. Tons of different stuff there. They have like leg warmers. You can like get some fun accessories there as well. Uh, so those were the three places I shopped um, in terms of outfits that I selected for the photo shoot. And then you also want to think about having different accessories available, like I mentioned, like for shoes and stuff, you want to have a variety. Um, it was nice because my photographer helped me, like I just kind of laid it all out for him and said, this is what we're working with. And he said, great, that bodysuit, those shoes, and this, you know, like he just went with it. So I also brought a variety of shoes with me as well. I brought like big platformy heels. And then I also brought like a selection of different sneakers too. So brought a selection of different colors, um, different Jordans I had, Nikes. I think it's better to be over prepared for your photo shoot than under prepared. So bring anything possible. Like I brought a pair of ripped jeans with me that I didn't think I was gonna wear, but I'm like, oh, who knows? And we did end up using them and they ended up making some of the best, like that and like a little lacy top I brought, I didn't think I would he would want to use, but we used it and it turned out perfect for the pictures. So my point is just be over prepared with accessories, with different outfits, with different looks that you think might work well and hopefully your photographer will help you kind of select what looks best for the shoe. Um, thinking about a tan, I would definitely suggest some type of spray tan for the photo shoot. For me, again, that was an expense that worked out nicely because I had the competition day spray tan, which is super dark, but I just rinsed it off that night. The next day, the tan, I rinsed it off again. It basically looked perfect for a photo shoot. Um, so if you don't, I would suggest doing some type of like basic spray tan or zoom tan or whatever for the day of your shoot. Um, in addition to that, I had with me, because of the competition, a Giantana glaze that I use for the stage. He said to use that because it helps give your muscles that nice kind of shimmer. So if you're doing a fitness shoot, you might want to have something to kind of help shine you up a little bit. Um, and the other thing you need to think about as well are hair and makeup. For me, I had the option to hire someone to do hair and makeup and she was very affordable and did excellent work. So I felt comfortable with that. And it was just less stress for me to pay someone to do my hair and makeup. So I actually didn't need to bring anything for hair and makeup. I did bring hair extensions that I got from Tori V on Instagram. That's the only place I know her through, but she has a website. I wanted to do the extensions because I thought it would bring a little something more to um, my shots, but they're definitely not necessary. But for me, I paid someone, so that's your option. Take a look into that, because that's another expense. I spent $200, which 
is affordable compared to some other things I've seen for hair and makeup. So take a look and see if that's an option or if you're gonna need to do your own hair and makeup. Um, for hair and makeup, you need to think about what's gonna translate best on camera. I mean, if you've ever done your own hair and makeup and thought it looked slamming and then you take a photo and you're like, oh, it doesn't really look as special. For photos like this, you need to kind of go like tranny a bit. You need to do super dark makeup. You need to have it show. Um, you need to do some contouring. The hair you probably want to go a little bit bigger with. All that kind of stuff that I'm not so good with on my own, so I paid her to do that. But if you're doing it on your own, I recommend you practice ahead of time for kind of what look you're wanting to go with. And even like slap some selfies of your, or snap some selfies of yourself to kind of see how it translates to a photo. Um, and that's the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about beyond hair and makeup. You need to be able to be ready to do a photo shoot. So you want to be somewhat comfortable um, knowing what looks good on you in terms of your face, your facial gestures, your hand gestures, how your body looks. Um, that was the one thing I was fairly nervous about, like how I was going to be on camera. I, you know, it's one thing if you're snapping a selfie, but to have someone else taking photos of you, you need to know what to do. So my photographer was excellent with that, made me feel very comfortable and was just like, you know, put your hand here, do this with your hair, and he helped guide me. So you might want to look into if your photographer does help you with that. Um, if not, just start getting comfortable looking in the mirror at yourself and maybe, you know, doing different smiles or different looks. You don't want every photo to look exactly the same. Um, and it's amazing what, you know, turning your head just a little bit or your hand or the way your smile is, it can make a picture look completely different. So as weird as it sounds, spend some time in the mirror playing around with different looks. You know, I did more serious looks for my photo shoot and that was kind of out of my comfort zone because if you look at my Instagram, every photo I'm like, giant smile. That's just me. That's what I do. I always have a big smile on my face. So to do more of like the sexy, sultry kind of look, play around with it ahead of time if that's the look you're going for because you want to feel comfortable and confident in your photos. So um, I don't really know how to give you a how-to on the sexy, sultry look. I'm not so good with it, but you know, it, you can play around with it a little bit. The more you get comfortable doing it on your own, the more comfortable you're gonna feel with it the day of your photo shoot, and that will translate in your photos. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to mention in kind of this like beginner 101 photo shoot video. If you guys would like more specific videos on um, hair and makeup tips for the day of the shoot or diet prep, things like that, for me I prepped very similar because I was prepping for a competition and made it real easy. I kind of combined it all in one shot. But um, let me know what more you guys would like to know about photo shoot, getting ready, and I can do more videos on this topic. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you know someone who's prepping for a photo shoot, please share this video with them and hopefully they'll find it helpful. Keep checking back for more guys. Down, maneuver the ladies a bit and you should have that nice instant cleavage like you see in my photo. So five minutes to a fake boob job for five bucks. Can't go wrong with that. I know a lot of you noticed how it looked. I think it can help the symmetry for some of us natural ladies. And give this a try. Hope you guys like it. Hope you find it helpful. I wish I would have found this tip sooner. So try it out. Give this a like. Share it with your small ladied friends or girlfriends. And keep checking back.